the Sony GV300, GV200 series, this is going to focus mostly on the GV300. The only difference between the two mainly is the hi-fi stereo capability of the GV300. I don't bother with the GV200s. To me, they're not worth it. But there's a lot to like in these things. They have a, a active matrix, a 3-inch or 4-inch LCD color TV uh, with cable-ready tuner. Not digital, of course, but if your cable system still passes analog like mine does, they're perfectly usable. And it has, uh, as I said, it's a stereo. And uh, it's not high 8, it's regular 8 millimeter. These things use the famous, uh, what's called the Sony A mechanism, their best 8 millimeter mechanism. The one that came after this, this is, by the way, from 1992. In 1993, they went to the, uh, the next series mechanism, which we call the tin foil mechanism, and it was... Uh, didn't hold up well. It bent. The, the loading platforms would bend and uh, eesh, miserable. Anyway, the GV300s suffer from two problems. Two, one of them is a huge problem. One of them is a, an, an annoying problem. We'll do the annoying one first. These things have what I call these famous Sony sticky cabinet syndrome. This one doesn't. I mean, these have been cleaned. Um, what happened was they put a rubberized coating on these cabinets, uh, and they did this not only to these, but they did them to the FDL 3500 LCD color TV and the FDL 310 and so forth. What happened is the plasticizers, the chemicals that, that create the bonding in the material to put the rubberized coating on here, uh, they separate it almost like peanut butter separates and uh, the plasticizer comes to the surface and it makes them feel like they've been dipped in molasses. They're a disgusting, sticky mess. However, the good news, this as you can see is just a cabinet shell. Uh, the good news is that they can be cleaned with what else but my favorite easy off blue label oven cleaner and a toothbrush. And you can scrub that film off this, and they're just as clean and smooth as can be. And it doesn't hurt anything. You don't want to scrub too hard, because it eventually will take the uh, the writing off. So you don't want to do too too much. Just enough to, to where it gets all that old residue off here. And uh, that's the cosmetic issue. Electrically, it's another story. Um, as you see, there's a set of boards from one of these things. There's the, the tuner board, which is up in the uh, up in the lift up lid department up in here. This is a complete one here. And you see up in this tilt up. Oh no, I'm sorry, it's down here. There's the uh, tuner board. Up here is this is just the LCD board, the color processing and chroma board. But anyway, all of these. This is the audio board here. All of these electrolytics, these little tiny surface mount electrolytics, all have to be changed. They spill their guts. And this happens after the machine reaches about 10 years in age. And at now, at this point, these are 20 years old. And uh, I can see on this one, although I doubt you can see it on the camera, but there is a, uh, you can see the little, oh yeah, you can see it. That little underneath this cap here by the control here, there's a little spot of of a juice on the board, that's the electrolyte inside the capacitors oozing out. And what it eventually does is it eats right through the plate through holes, or the, what they call also call a via. And that are the little tiny, if I can show you this if, or not, the little tiny, see those, those little, where the, the PC trace like disappears to a black dot, and that black dot goes through the other side of the board. Now, some of these, I'm not sure, I think this is actually I don't know if this is double-plated or quad-plated. This is just double-plated, okay. But anyway, it eats those uh, traces away, the, the, the plate-through holes, and they still look kind of normal and uh, very difficult to tell. I do have a full service manual for this. It makes it a little bit easier. On the motherboard, it's the same situation. Every one of these caps has to be changed, and you have to clean the acid, the old electrolyte, off the board. You have to don't leave anything behind because if you do, it won't work. Then after you're all done with that, then you put it back together again and you're going to discover what you missed the first time. Fortunately, on the back side of the board, these uh, rectangular electrolytics are not affected by the failure mode that the uh, round aluminum electrolytics are. These are tantalum electrolytics here, square tantalums. They, they tend to stay out, they, they tend to stay okay. The audio board just snaps on here like this. But interesting here, this is kind of a long video, but I be, I think these things are interesting, so they're therefore they are covered. <clears throat> this is remember the Sears Wish book. 
God, how we kids used to fight over this when it came. This is a 1992 Sears Wish Pop. And here you have the GV200 right here in the catalog, and it was $1,000 in 1992. The GV300 was almost $2,000 because of the stereo, and it also came with a plug for a camera. The camera was optional. That was probably another $1,500. So that's why I think it's worth rehabbing these rather than see them turn into landfill. So this is just another... Uh, in the near distant, near distant future because I want to get some of this crap out of here. The stuff that's not going to be repaired is going to get dumped. The stuff I'm going to fix is going to get fixed. And the GV300s, I'm going to try to fix whatever I can. I've got three or four of these. And I've got several GV200s, but as I say, I don't bother with them. The GV8, which is the 8mm version, which I'm sorry, which is the first version of this style, the GV8, they're worthless. More trouble than they're worth. Just throw them out. But this one, this is the GV300. Now, the GV500 was, I think, two years newer than this one. A bigger screen, also hi-fi stereo, but they, they used a better quality capacitor, and that one's not as bad as these are. Still has the problem, but... There you go. So anyway, that's a brief look at the Sony GV300 Hi-Fi Stereo 8mm TV VCR, battery-operated or plug-in.